Atlanta, Detroit, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, Seattle, Salt Lake City, New York's JFK. If you've ever flown with Delta Airlines, you've no doubt flew through one or two of those airports. But have you ever visited all seven in a single day? Is that even possible? Well, you're about to find out because I'm giving it a try. Join me as we attempt this 24-hour aviation marathon we're calling Hub Hopping Delta Edition. Hello, Jet Setters. I've always wondered if it's possible to go through every Delta Hub in one day. Well, I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. We're about to find out together. This is Hub Hopping. Here's the plan. We're leaving Atlanta at 6 a.m., and if all goes well, we'll land at JFK exactly 24 hours later, having flown through all of Delta's legacy hubs. Let's recap. That's seven airports, six flights, over 6,000 miles in 24 hours. Let's get started. To make this happen, I'll need every one of those 24 hours. My first flight leaves Atlanta at 6 a.m., and that's when the clock starts. But I got to the airport at 4.15, in plenty of time for the departure. I think I'm here before security even opens, so... I'm really excited about this, what can I say? No surprise about the crowds, this is the world's busiest airport after all. Good vibes only, so security opens at 4.30, but I, it just really starts cracking at 4.45, that's okay. Boarding's not till 5.20, I'm gonna make way over to the gate. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This Airbus A321 will be the first ride of the day. Everything looked to be on time, so I decided to slip into the Sky Club for some coffee. But it doesn't open for another 45 minutes. Well, that was a swing and a miss, wasn't it? I guess I'll get some coffee over here. Gate's right over there. So go ahead and pause the video here and um, let me know. Do you think I'm going to make it? I really, I really don't know. There are all so many moving pieces, so just pause the video here. Uh, and leave a comment down below. Do you think I'm gonna make it? I hope so. And even though I was on my own out here, I had some help back home. Suzanne is keeping an eye on things in case anything goes awry. Hey, it's Suzanne, checking in from Greensboro, North Carolina. I have opened a command center today and I'm tracking all of Jeb's flights, monitoring for any weather, delays, any issues he's gonna know about it. And of course, repping Delta and sending those good vibes his way. Meanwhile, back in Atlanta. Boarding flight number one, we're going to Detroit. I quickly settled in. Now, I booked this hub hopping adventure in first class. I know it's indulgent, but I wanted to have as much room as possible. And sitting toward the front of the plane meant I could get off more quickly on tight connections. More on how we booked these tickets in a bit. The captain wants to have a word with us. We should be underway here in just a few more minutes. Once we get underway, it's uh, one hour, 28 minutes in round today up to uh, Detroit. A uh, little bit of patchy frost uh, this morning out on the wings. So uh, we will stop by the uh, icing bay and. Uh, get the uh, airplane at the ice to prevent uh, that little bit of frost out there. So that tour only takes about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then uh, we'll be taxed down and taken off. So. And he was right, it did not take much time. We took off from Atlanta at 621, so the clock has officially started. I've got 24 hours to make it through every Delta hub, but let's hope for no more ice. I was grateful to Delta for including seatback entertainment on most of their fleet. Would there be enough movies to keep me entertained for 24 hours, though? We'll see. Wi-Fi was available on this flight for $5. Delta's currently testing free Wi-Fi for SkyMiles members, and thankfully I was on one of the test aircraft for two of today's flights. I couldn't pass up a second cup of coffee. And the views out the window were spectacular. Just a taste of what was to come. The sunrise was magical which is more than I can say for the in-seat entertainment. It failed mid-flight. Thankfully, I'd have plenty of time to catch up on what I was watching. Hopefully, we're going to see all the hubs today, but let me know in the comments which is the worst and which is the best Delta hub. We got to the gate at 7.55, four minutes late, but four minutes isn't too bad. This almost seems too easy. First flight, check. Second airport, check. Next stop, Minneapolis. Let's go. I was a little concerned when they had to de-ice, uh, but thankfully we made it plenty of time. I'm headed to the gate now, check out the airplane. That's the airplane we're taking over to Minneapolis. The great news is it's also the plane that'll be taking me on to Los Angeles. The stress of hub hopping. It always feels great to be back in Detroit. I'll never forget my most vivid memory of Detroit was flying on the inaugural A350 flight, the very first time that Delta flew it from here in Detroit over to Tokyo, Narita. That was also really early in the channel's history, so it's kind of a momentous thing to be back here in Detroit. 
my euphoria was short-lived. Our gate agent just made an announcement that the flight crew are running behind. They've just landed. They've got to make their way over to the gate and uh, get the plane ready to go. There could be no doubt, the hardest job at an airline is gate agent. These, these folks are the front lines. They uh, have to deal with confused travelers, people who aren't sure what's happening, and dealing with delays and, and giving bad news to people all the time. So next time you're facing a gate agent, just express a little gratitude and, and say thanks. As our boarding time came and went, there was still no sign of the crew. This is nerve wracking for sure. Look, I have an hour and 20 minutes uh, in Minneapolis, but every second counts when you're hub hopping. Just uh, announced a delay up there, but that should should still give us enough time to connect in Minneapolis onto LA. <laughs> it's, it's killing me. Hub hopping is not for the faint of heart. Okay, I, uh, I just spotted the crew, they're here. Uh, so they'll get the airplane checked out, make sure it's safe, and then we'll, we'll board. Hopefully this will be the fastest boarding experience in Delta history. Time to go to Minneapolis. I was grateful for this, my third cup of coffee of the day. We were supposed to leave Detroit at 9.05, but didn't pull away from the gate until 9.19. It's gonna take a miracle to reach Minneapolis on time at 10.08. And then, wouldn't you know it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck. Welcome aboard. As you've, uh, I'm sure, already figured out, uh, we're uh, gonna get some uh, frost taken off from the wings and tail surfaces. Once we get airborne today, an hour and 16 minutes over to Minneapolis, St. Paul. Here's the thing about hub hopping. There's not much to be done while you're in the air. So, I had some ginger ale to calm my stomach. I was so nervous about this day. As I mentioned, Delta is currently testing free Wi-Fi for SkyMiles members, and I was lucky enough to be on an airplane, this airplane, that was part of that test. It worked really well, and I hope the test is successful and Delta is able to roll this out fleet-wide, especially because it makes it easier to share your progress with others. Somehow, we touched down at 9.55, giving us plenty of time to get to the gate in time for an on-time arrival. Huge thanks to the pilots and air traffic controllers who made that miracle happen. But wouldn't you know it, our gate was occupied when we reached it. We had to wait to park. But somehow, we were still deboarding right on time at 10.08. I was living right today. Second flight, check. Third airport, check. Next up... LA. Minneapolis was bustling. Best part of this, uh, same plane, same gate to LA, so I don't even have to walk very far, but I think I am going to stretch my legs. We have about 30 minutes before boarding. I'm remembering one of my very first flights, uh, international flights rather, was out of here. I flew from here in Minneapolis to Rome on a Northwest Airlines DC-10. What a great memory that is. Let's hope that fire alarm is not real and this does not cause a delay. That's not what I need right now. I went to the customer service desk to print boarding passes, and I have to admit, the reaction of this agent seeing my reservations lined up on the screen was pretty funny. Well, first of all, fire alarm's off. Second of all, that was a great interaction. The customer service agents really throughout Delta are great. In order to make this work, I booked three separate tickets. Atlanta to Minneapolis through Detroit was one. And this was the start of my second one, to Seattle through LA. And the final push from Seattle to New York through Salt Lake was the third ticket. <laughs> Given the fact that uh, gate G21 is about as far at the end of the airport as you can get, I really lucked out having the same gate and airplane uh, on the inbound as the outbound. So we're gonna take a quick moment and let you know that we'll be offsetting the carbon not only just from this hub hopping adventure, but also all of our flights from this year. Just seems like the right thing to do. Time to get back on board. Let's go to LA. I got on a plane at 10.53. We're scheduled to leave here at 11.31 and get into LAX at 1.36. Back today. Our flight line says three hours and eight minutes. That's the time in route Very best to find you a smooth ride. We made our way out to the runway and were airborne on time. Thankfully, no delays or even any need to de-ice this time, and that was crucial. LA is the tightest connection of the day. If we're on time, I'll only have 43 minutes on the ground there before my next flight to Seattle. 
I was grateful to have a bite to eat on this flight. I'd received an email a few days earlier with options for lunch. <laughs> Out of these, what do you think I picked? The cheeseburger, of course. It tasted just like a burger that had been reheated on a plane, but beggars can't be choosers, and I was extremely thankful to have something, anything to eat, particularly on this longer flight. This was by far one of the most beautiful flights across the country I can recall. Now, things got really good once we crossed the Rocky Mountains, but we first had to make our way through some pretty choppy air. Not only did the routing take us over some of the nation's most beautiful places, but a recent snowstorm made everything just so much more scenic. For the rest of this flight, I simply relaxed and barely took my eyes off the window. The views of Colorado's snowy peaks were surpassed only by the deserts and canyons of Utah. We passed over Arches National Park, Canyonlands, and even Zion, too. As we reached Las Vegas, though, Suzanne was still keeping an eye on things. Let us know in the comments, what websites do you typically use to track flights? As you can see, I'm a flight aware gal. And thanks to her command center, I knew we were okay for time as we entered Los Angeles airspace. Landing in Los Angeles after being in those snowy hubs up north was certainly a change of pace, but I needed to get to the gate to make my way to the next flight onto Seattle. I was headed north again. Thankfully, we were early. We got to the gate at 104. Delta seems like an on-time machine today, but will that continue? Flight three, check. Airport four, check. Next stop, Seattle. Los Angeles, LAX is the only airport to appear in both of the hub hopping videos that I've made so far, United and Delta. Uh, so it's exciting to be back for this purpose. Lucky again. The flight to Seattle was just around the corner at gate 37A. This was always gonna be my tightest connection and I've got about 30 minutes or so before boarding begins. This is, I'm feeling good, I'm about halfway through, but there's still a lot that can happen. And delays tend to stack toward the end of a day and that's where we are. So uh, on to Seattle and then still two more flights after that. This flight up the West Coast was on board another 737. Let's go to Seattle. I boarded at 141 for our 219 departure. This was another beautiful flight, a great way to take in the West Coast. Again, this was another meal flight, and although I wasn't all that hungry thanks to the lunch I'd had just a few hours before, I couldn't say no when meatballs were on the menu. And these were some pretty good meatballs. Much better than ones you may have seen previously on this channel. As we continued our northward trek, passing just to the east of San Francisco Bay, the real highlights of this flight were Mount Shasta, and shortly after, Crater Lake. This sunset marked 13 and a half hours since I left Atlanta. And it was here, on this final approach into Seattle, that I had to do some serious soul searching. I wasn't sure I could keep going. By this point, I'd been up for something like 16 hours. I was just running out of steam. We touched down just after 4.40 and plenty of time to make our scheduled 5.14 arrival, but that early arrival did nothing to wake me up. We reached the gate 26 minutes ahead of schedule, and as soon as I stepped off the airplane, I needed to find a second win, and I decided to look for it in the coffee maker at the Sky Club. Flight number four, check. Airport number five, check. Next stop, Salt Lake City, I think. The last time I was in Seattle, I was making an airport's reveal video about this airport. It's a fascinating place. There's so much going on in such a small space. You'll definitely have to check that video out. I'll link to it in the description below. I know it's the next leg, the Salt Lake to JFK uh, flight that's really the red eye, but I can't help but think, I have not been on a domestic red eye flight 
in maybe 15 years. <laughs> I'm pretty beat, but still have two more flights to go. I keep sending positive vibes if this thing happens. Hop hopping with United took 19 hours, but I was going one way across the country. There's something psychologically different, even though it's only five hours longer with this one in that I'm coming one way across the country and then back the other way in 24 hours. I, uh, I spent too much time in the lounge. That was, that was not a good decision. Uh, but I made it just as boarding was starting. Boarding yet another 737 for this trip began at 6.30 for our 7.13 departure. And it was right here, as we were boarding this flight, that this channel crossed a major milestone. Literally just crossed 500,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I can think of no more surreal or better environment to uh, have achieved that milestone than this. Please don't let my tired eyes belie the gratitude Suzanne and I feel for each of you. We're so grateful that thanks to your support of this channel, we get to live our wildest dreams. We'd like to extend our welcome aboard, along with our Salt Lake City-based flight attendants. Our flying time, one hour and 31 minutes. But first, we had to get de-iced. When I went hub hopping with United last year, I had to contend with summer storms. Which do you find worse for traveling, those storms or this ice? By this point, Suzanne had gone to bed. If anything funky happens in Salt Lake, I'm on my own. But the most likely scenario is I fall asleep and miss the final flight. I was entering my 22nd hour without sleep. Flight five, check. Airport six, I think, check. Next stop, uh, JFK. This is the last leg to JFK. And some of you may be thinking I'm missing something, like Boston. Well, I'm really focused on the legacy hubs here. I imagine if I were to do this in a year or two, uh, this experience would look a lot different. I'm glad that the thing's about done because <laughs> I'm ready for a real bed. Here goes. One more flight, the big red eye. Now the question is, I wonder if there's gonna be a pillow on the plane. I'm thinking no. Like the first flight, this leg would be on an A321. Unfortunately, for the second time today, late arriving crew members cost us an on-time departure. But we have to get out of here on time. We're scheduled into JFK at 6 a.m., giving very little wiggle room to get this done in 24 hours. Waiting for our flight attendants for a flight to JFK. Apparently, they just landed here at Salt Lake City. So hopefully, they'll be uh, coming to the gate here soon. Despite the delay, I boarded at 11.20. We were scheduled to depart at 11.31. We're not going to make that. But how late are we gonna get into JFK? When we make it in 24 hours, it all comes down to this flight. I was glad to see not only a pillow, but also a blanket on the seat since I was, at this point, completely done. I'd been up for 23 hours straight. Which is why you're seeing me here. You see, I fell asleep right after takeoff. I was just so tired. But the good news is I woke up as we were on our final approach into JFK. And I'm so pleased to announce we accomplished it. We were able to visit every Delta hub in less than 24 hours. Flight six, check, hub airport seven, check, next stop. Well, I would say bed, but a flight to Raleigh and then bed. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky. Or this following flight when I was on the first, anyway, whatever, it's very complicated. And that's probably useless in the video because it doesn't tell you anything. Flight's going to LA, I could just, uh, I could go back. No. I know what's... I am, hey, you wanna say oh hi? You wanna say hi? Hi! Hey. Oh my goodness. Thanks for watching, what's, what's your name? I'm John. John, nice to meet you. Same gate Suzanne and I came back into after our three airlines in one day challenge.